I'm Tuya. I'm basically like started as a developer and now I'm an AI apprentice at AI Singapore. So if you haven't heard about AI Singapore, it's actually a national a government initiative to like brand, train you guys to do how to do like AI technologies and like machine learning and deep learning sort of thing. So if you haven't heard of it, you can check it out. Just type AI Apprentice program and you will find it. It's a nine months full time program. They pay you to learn stuff, so it's cool. So this is me, I'm currently apprentice at AI Singapore. One of the side things that I do, I also uh, even manager in Geeks Hacking. Uh, Geeks Hacking actually is like tech community, we sort of like embrace tech, like innovation sort of thing. If you are a junior developer that want to learn new stuff, you can check out our like, events. We also have free events to train you on like mobile development, web development, uh, all sort of stuff. So this is my backstory. I study uh, IT from Republic Poly, slowly go to computer science, and also after I graduate, I work for RPA analyst. It is basically like automation of business processes. So you sort of like automate credit card issuing, like uh, digitizing sort of things into like uh, like we are basically writing scripts to do this kind of thing. So it's sort of like a developer job, but you are not building application; you are writing scripts. So from there, I progressed into like AI apprentice, where I learned about machine learning, artificial intelligence, and like deep learning. So yeah, these slides are really uh, based on my experience. So if you have different experience, uh, yeah, you might the difference the experience might be differ from how I experience it as a developer that going into uh, AI. Yeah, so take it with a pinch of salt. So there are quite a few difference that I can gather from being an AI practitioner versus developer. The first thing is job scope, right? How does it differ? So as a developer, you are just writing rules for the program to follow, whereby if you are AI practitioner, you are sort of programming the machines to learn the rule by itself. So you don't write rules. For example, you are trying to classify between cats and dogs. If you are a developer, you will write, oh, cat is something like small, cute little things with like a pointy ears. But if you're a dog, then it's like a long turn, you know, a longer nose sort of things. You're writing all sorts of set of rules to classify all these uh, uh, pictures. But if you are trying an AI approach, you probably just keep feeding the, the algorithms with all the pictures with like, oh, this is cat, this is cat, this is cat, and it recognizes that the picture is cat. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. I have drawn out this uh, diagram. So what you do as a developer is basically you have input and you have a program. You process it, right? You try to compute it, then you have like result. So if, for example, you try to call API call. You write API, you have input, like API key, then you try to write uh, like API call. You press button, you get back the result. That, that's like developer. But for AI, right, you have input and you have the output. So you don't know what to write in the middle. Like how do you come from this input to output? So you just feed the entire thing, the input and output into a computation, which is like a, the program. Then the algorithm will generate a program for you. So you don't have to write like specific rule what to do and what not to do. Then the thought process. The next thing is thought process. If you are a developer, you probably think about apps. Let's say you want to do some project, right? They will say, oh, what do you want to do? Are you going to do web app, mobile app? Are you going to build on like oh, Kotlin, Android, you know, uh, C Sharp, C++? As an AI apprentice or the AI practitioner, you have to think about the data. Like, what kind of data you have? You cannot just build like uh, and like very good machine learning model if you don't have any data at all. So you need to have like input and the output to get the process, uh, the program by itself. So you need a lot of data. Like, uh, maybe you are trying to classify whether is it dog or cat. So maybe try to get identify like credit card fraud by using a lot of transitions, or maybe try to get like. Uh, try to recognize the faces like you know if you if you try out like image recognition you try to detect who you are like, if, like Facebook you try to detect who you are who your friends are recommend you text all sort of things so all these require data that's why Facebook let you like upload photos for free or maybe Google upload photos for free this, this is what, how you're paying you know by uploading your data and like tagging your friends so remember if you remember like 2008 something there's no such thing so you just have to tag your friend manually like you will go to your face and tag them, tag them, tag them, right? It's basically you're training their model. So once they get it, now they are using it to like recommend you. Oh, is it your friend? Is it your friend? Yeah. So it's you that you know train their, their model and you're you are working for them like, intentionally. As a programming skills, right? Like we are developers, so you need to have a lot, uh, like you need to like in depth sort of thing. 
you need to learn like uh, Python, C++, C++, we've been learning a lot, I've been from IT all the way to computer science, I learn programming every day, you know, do coding, so I have to de like, learn in the like uh, multi-threading, synchronizing, you know, ABI call, asynchronize, uh, so many things, right? But if you are AI apprentice, your focus is a bit different, so you won't be learning in depth into how to program things, because it will be automatically programmed, right? So you have to, you will be learning more towards um, Understanding the context, which is like uh, math, like the formula, how you're going to interpolate from like the input to output. Like you have the, this sort of data, right? For example, you are trying to predict HDB housing price in 10 years time. So you have to know what kind of input that you can put in, then what kind of output you're expecting. Then you try to come up with like math formula behind it to understand it. And which, if you don't have math background, right? You sort of can't relate what's happening with the data and how the program is going to give you this kind of result. So you don't need very in-depth like programming skills. You need a handful like maybe Python, R, you know, uh, SQLs, NoSQLs, a little bit of uh, API call sort of thing. But the more intensive things you need is to understand the algorithms and the math behind it. So the next one is math, like how deep you have to go, right? So as a developer, you don't really need to do a lot of math. Maybe like Boolean algebra for some operations. But as an apprentice or AI, AI program, right, you have to do like statistics, probability, you know, uh, even like integrations, differentiation, all sorts of things have to be important. You have to be familiar with all the symbols that you write, you know, all the Greek letter. I, like when I see it, I just want to throw your paper away, that kind of, like, that kind of level of math. So yeah, if you understand it, like when you get into it, right, you understand it, you read as like, like a code. Like you, when you try to read, for example, you try to read nested function, right? It is the same, like if you understand it, you, have, you can read the codes also. It's, also. it's not the same, just the different domains, expertise. So yeah, as a data thing, like if you are a developer, your project manager or your, your clients will just give you like, oh, just use this data, like a dummy data, right? Maybe phone number 123456. Then you just use that to try to program, you know, this input is valid or not, try to use rejects to like validate five number, six number, six number with one, one alphabetical order, right? So you don't really need like real life data to pr produce something uh, which is doable, like uh, can go to live sort of programs. But if you are doing AI application, you really need a real life data because what you need is input and output, right? It has to be real to get a real program that can do execution. So if you don't have a real life data, too bad your AI program will just predict wrong stuff all the time. Oh, then this is like one of the main things that a lot of people are talking about is a reproducibility. What, mean, what it means basically is try to reproduce whatever you have done, right? As a developer, let's say you have uh, developed a mobile app, maybe three buttons in it, like one input. How, do you, like, how often do you, you can like, try to reproduce that? You can always reproduce three buttons with one input, right? All the time. You don't really need any uh, specifications or any like, data format or anything. But for AI applications, the, the requirements of data, like how many columns do you have? How many rows do you have? Like what are the data? When, is, when it was taken? All sorts of things are very important for the programs to like, predict accurately. So the tolerance of like, having a wrong data right, is very low for AI applications. So the data is like the key things that you have to be care of. So if your data is dirty, doesn't make any sense. Your AI doesn't make any sense as well. So for the accuracy, as a developer, you have to be really like 100% sure that your buttons will work, right? Let's say you, you, you have programmed an uh, e-commerce website, your checkout button, right? You, you cannot say like my checkout button what 80% of the time. Your, your boss probably will fire you, right, for saying that. So your, your checkout buttons, all sort of like lock-in buttons have to work 100% of the time, right? But for AI applications, the accuracy doesn't really that, like no, not really strict have to be comfort level for the business to make decisions. So you can say like, uh, I think HGB price will highly go up by 2% in the future. And no one knows what's in the future. So they're like, okay, I think based on these sort of formulas, uh, I think it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, we accept it that yeah, 82%, good, 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 yeah. So this kind of comfort level that you can play around. So you can really get 100% accurate models, that just to be clear. So anything above like 85, that's quite, quite doable already. So yeah, the most like one million dollar questions: Why AI replace developer? Well, what do you guys think? 
Yeah, it's, I think it's probably not. A lot of people that you, if you read about it, right, there's like, I don't know, 200 like, articles talking about it. So uh, I think it's probably not because developer, right, we, we, we have some uh, foundations that, you know, I don't think AI can replace some logics that in our head is happening. Like whenever we progress something, there are some unspoken rules or some unspoken things that, you know, in our heads are happening that we, AI can never replace. So yeah, the next one, right, this code is in C. It was trained on Linux repository. It can write this kind of code. So it's only trained like, I think, two days. Do you think you can write this kind of code in two days? Yeah, it is in legit, like, if, if you take a look at it. Yeah, it has like for loop, it has, you know, some comments in there. It's in legit, like, written by some experienced programmer, but the good thing is you can compile that. So you, you can push it to you know, <laughs> GitHub repo. So if you want to try it out, right, there's the GitHub profile as well. And you can go and check it out. He has written like entire code and entire uh, programs, the like AI programs to you know, get into these kind of states. So if, if you're free, maybe you can just take a look, keep training your model until you can code like you, then you can just you know, drink coffee every day. Just let it <laughs> run. Like if I ask you to do some feature, right? Just let it run. Just go for coffee or play games, whatever. Right? Yeah, so if you are interested to get started, the good thing about AI, right, everything is free. Yeah, you don't have to like pay money to learn it. Like there's like a lot of good YouTube videos that you can find. There's Coursera course, which is machine learning to intro. This is like go to machine learning intro, right? Whatever you are not sure about math formula or whatever, right? The machine learning intro given by Andrew, the professor Andrew Ang is very good. And deep learning intro is there as well. And the medium, right, is actually like a stack overflow for AI practitioners. So everything that you want to do, for example, I want to generate like a, just now the, 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 the code, right? Actually, probably someone has already done it. The guides are there. How you set it up, how you run it, what kind of things that you should expect to do. All these are there. So, and the Kurgles is, is like a challenge thing. So what they do, they sort of like upload the data because data is the most important thing. They upload the data, they give you a problem statement. You try to solve it using the machine learning techniques that you know. So if you can like beat other people in accuracy or maybe like simplicity wise, they will reward you. It can be like $1 million if you just keep trying out. Yeah, the prices are too high. You just take a look, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, and data camp, right, is the intro courses, which is free. Uh, if you want to try out the tracks, you have to pay. Yeah. but. If you are just like willing to try it out, you can just drop them an email saying that you are a developer, you're interested in this. They are very nice. They probably give you like, I don't know, three months access or something. And you can finish that in like two months. So yeah. And if you haven't heard, this AI Singapore approach, which is like government funded uh, agency. We have a lot of programs like apprentice program. There's AI for E, AI for everyone program, which is like runs in a day, like half a day. Yeah, around nine to like three or four. Yeah, we sort of like give you what you should be expecting in AI. Then there's, if you are like industry, then there's AI for industry, they train you on like data cam, uh, da data science track. So you have someone to like guide you along. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask. Also your question. So if you check out, right, actually it's all government funded. You just have to pay like a certain like 20%, I think. I'm not, right. I, I'm not sure about the cost, yeah. But AI for E is free. AI for I, you need to pay a little bit more. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take, either here or at the back. Yeah, if you yeah, if you like don't want to talk to me in person, you can always like talk to me on LinkedIn. Yeah, thanks.